Hey folks, Zeta here, hope you're well. Uh, this is one I've been cooking up for a minute now. Um, this timbre table I've been working on for the past few weeks, uh, just kind of on and off. Uh, but it's been an idea that I've had, uh, inspired by the folks at Ports and Studio, which are epic. Of course, I want to put my own spin to it and make it a, make a timbre table out of skateboards and everything like that. So that's essentially what I did in this video. Um, we're just gonna cut straight to the chase. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the edit on this one too. So I hope you enjoy. Take it easy, peace. Part one, building the box. So we start this build off with some one inch Baltic birch plywood uh, that's got a walnut veneer to it. I had some of this stuff laying around from another project that I had in mind, so uh, I figured I'd use it up for this particular project. I wanted to have a table with curved edges uh, and a table that was approximately two feet by two feet. After making some initial cuts in the table saw, I used a protractor to come up with curves around the edges uh, and then cut them on a bandsaw. After cutting them on a bandsaw, I later cleaned them up uh, just on the sander uh, to bring it right to the line and everything like that. From there on the inside, uh, I knew I needed to build a track and needed a model to base that off of. So I used some chipboard, uh, I chopped that on the table saw, and basically went through the same process of, you know, basically coming up with the exact same shape as the two by two uh, boards. From there, I actually deduced about an inch off the edges all the way around. And this was of course knowing that my timbre was gonna be approximately a quarter inch. I'd have a track that's about a quarter inch. So I'd have an inset of about three quarter inches. After that particular model for the track was cut out, uh, you know, here it is stacked up against the plywood. I decided to use a trim router uh, and a quarter inch bit to cut out the track. With this particular uh, quarter inch bit, I went actually about 3 sixteenths of an inch deep uh, into the wood there. After cutting out two identical tracks, I still had to build the box out essentially. Uh, and that's essentially all the in-between between the uh, two pieces of plywood there. Knowing that skateboards lengthwise run about a foot tall or so, uh, I decided to make the box 11 and a half inches tall. Uh, and did so by cutting up more of the plywood. For this particular project, alignment was everything, or else it would throw off the timbre and stuff. So, you know, we really had to make sure things were perfectly aligned. So with the bottom portion assembled, uh, I used a big square just to make sure things seemed as aligned as possible. Then I used green tape to indicate key spots uh, because I would then use, be using the dowel max to ensure I had accurate alignment when drilling uh, holes all over for my dowels. Once that was done, uh, I was able to essentially dry fit everything. And from there, uh, I had a box that was essentially ready to receive the timbre. From here, we focus on the timbre. Using a sled, we start off by cutting 1 8 inch strips of skateboards. After cutting roughly 140 strips, which wasn't actually all that long, it only took about an hour or so, uh, and it's actually surprisingly only about five skateboards in total, uh, I organized the strips of skateboards and then I glued them to some canvas that I had. The clamp up sort of looked something like this, uh, and then I left that overnight uh, and came back to an intact timbre essentially. From there we had to crack the joints, a uh, little bit of glue that would get in between all the joints of the skateboards and everything like that, and just did that on a corner of a table. And yeah, from there I had a pretty sweet timbre. Uh, from there, uh, the key was to sand the edges, kind of have it look like a bullnose kind of configuration. Uh, and similar to waxing a curb, I was able to wax the edges of the timbre uh, and was fortunate enough to have a pretty solid fit. And uh, yeah, when I slid those into the box that I had created in part one, uh, Frig, things looked solid and it was exactly what I had dreamed of.
For the legs, I wanted something that's splayed and also tapered. And I wanted to use walnut to uh, match the walnut veneer of the box, essentially. So I started with four pieces of two inch by two inch by six inch long legs. And after finding the center, drilling out a 5 16 inch hole, uh, I was able to tap and dye a 3 8 inch thread into it. Um, I just have a jig for the lathe uh, that I've had around. I use it for my tampers and things like that. Uh, and I was essentially able to attach this to my jig and use that to turn on, on the lathe. I have other videos of how I turn things, and so I'll link them below and everything like that. After turning about four of these things, using calipers to ensure that they were approximately the same uh, in terms of size and things like that, we then turned back to the box and how they attach the box. We first use a pencil to mark the center point of the box, uh, the approximate angles that we would want to the legs to be splayed to, which is essentially towards the corners and things like that. And then using a Forstner bit, we cut out the rough circle of the two inches that we would want uh, the legs to be in. From there, actually using a trim router, we build this jig, knowing that going down about 3 8 inches uh, with this particular jig, we would get approximately a 10 degree angle. So having built this, we then used the trim router and ensure that we trim routed solely into the circle of the Forstner bit so that it would give us our approximate angle for where we would attach the leg. Once routed out, uh, we then took a drill, drilled again our 5 16 hole uh, and tapped that to receive a 3 8 inch thread. And essentially from there, we were able to thread in our legs. Um, this is the dry fit, but of course I used a bit of epoxy on them actually, and uh, yeah, they're on there pretty rock solid now. Once this was done, we were fortunate to have a perfect fit for all four legs. With that, uh, we drilled some holes uh, into the timbre actually, uh, so that your fingers can pull the timbre across easily and kind of fit them in there, and actually used the Danish oil to finish everything. With that, we essentially had ourselves a finished product.